What's up, modern statters? After harvesting our chickens the other day and having the video on it, we've gotten quite a few comments about what do we do with the innards afterwards, the feathers, and our blood. And when I told people what we did, they were kind of like, you can't do that. What we do is we compost them all. But we compost all that stuff in wood chips. You want something that's very high in carbon and that's gonna sit for a while and that's a hot pile. And people are like, oh, that's gonna smell, that's gonna stink. Right here is where all the innards, feet, feathers, and blood is from all the 22 chickens that we harvested and two carcasses because two of the birds we cut up and we took the meat from. That's all in that pile. I'm standing right here. And let me tell you, you can't smell it at all. And that's another reason to use the wood chips. Pluto's right over there. She's not digging in it. We got neighbor's dogs. They're not digging in it. We have bears in the area and plenty of other wild animals. And the pile hasn't been touched. And all that's gonna make a really nice, rich compost. We might not be able to use that for a year or two, but that's brought me to the point of this video right here is we need to start thinking about modern homesteaders investment plans. And this is one of our biggest investment plans around here is composting in our gardens and how we think about things. I'm gonna bring you through our little modern homestead and show you some of the things we're doing and explain a little bit more to you about my concept of a modern steaders investment plan. We got our wood chips where we can put everything left over from butchering in here and make some awesome compost. Come on, Pluto. Over here, if we have stuff that we need to get chipped up, we have more wood chips. We could grow mushrooms in there because that's mostly hardwood wood chips. That's been thanks to a lot of the subscribers who left comments. We're gonna have to look into growing mushrooms in our wood chip pile. That's gonna be awesome. So that's one way we're taking advantage of waste. You're crazy. Crazy dog! You're crazy! What are you doing? You all done now? I like to think of the modern homestead as a closed loop system. When, what I mean by that is when something comes onto the homestead, we wanna to try to keep it here. Or for say, something's growing, apples. We're gonna be loaded with apples. These are old trees. They're not all the very tastiest apples, but we can compost them. We can feed them to our animals and have them turn them into bacon, eggs, chicken meat, all that good stuff. And whatever we can't use, we can compost or turn into apple cider, apple cider vinegar, apple pies, apple sauce, you name it. There's plenty of things to do. Everything here can just be some kind of revenue source, whether it's for food for us, food for our animals, or just compost, which it really isn't just compost. Compost will, in the following year, grow our vegetables. While we're on the topic of growing vegetables, bring it over to the garden. We have all this awesome vegetables growing, and if we're growing too much food, we can, or if we got a bad piece of cucumber or any kind of fruit, vegetable here, we can give it to our animals, turn it into bacon, and then we, or turn it into eggs. And what's just cool about that too is, then we get manure out of that, and that goes back into compost and grows more vegetables. I just think that's amazing. So like right here we have grass clippings. We're using that for mulch, and then that'll get broken down and be compost for next year. And that's suppressing the weeds, and that's keeping more nutrients and more water right in our soil, which is gonna give us a better plant. We can use our wood chips for a weed suppressor, and that'll also help grow worms. See, it's killing the grass. We just put our wood chips right on top of our grass and the weeds. It saves labor. This one really gets me all tickled lately. We buy hay, and when we put our chickens in our winter chicken coop, we build up the side walls to keep the chickens warmer so we don't have to heat the chicken coop. We don't put a light out there. We don't put any heat source out there. Our chickens will stay laying eggs all winter long in our winter chicken coop. So we buy in hay, which is carbon for bedding, and then we use that hay for deep bedding mulch, and this is what we're doing with it now. Say hello to the camera. You got niche? You got niche too? 
We have our pigs inside of our winter greenhouse turning all that deep bedding into awesome compost and we can put that on our gardens. But the really cool thing about this right now is our pigs are eating less feed because they're eating all that deep bedding. They're going through, rooting it up, they're eating some of the hay, they're eating some of the grain left over that the chickens didn't eat. So they're kind of our cleanup crew, but making us compost, awesome compost for our garden for free. Think about that. That compost is free. I paid for it once and I've gotten multiple uses out of it. I got a heat source to keep the chickens warm in the winter time. I got bedding out of it. The chickens scratched through it, ate some food out of it, ate the grass, ate some of the grains, the seeds that are in the hay. And now the pigs are loving it and they're turning it into bacon and then I get to grow free food with it. I mean, that just gets me so excited. And then if I have free food from the garden that I can't eat or that is damaged or whatever, I can give it to the pigs and then they'll grow more free food with it. It's just crazy. You got an itchy butt? <laughs> we have the chickens over here in our apple orchard restoring an old apple orchard. So we're feeding them, but we're getting eggs from them. We're getting them to work and clean up and weed and do an awesome job cleaning up that apple orchard. But they're not just cleaning up the apple orchard, they're fertilizing it, which in return is gonna give us more apples. If we don't like the apples, or if they fall to the ground, guess what, they're gonna be chicken feed, and the chickens are gonna love them. And don't worry about the arsenic in the apple seeds. A lot of people tell me there's arsenics in apple seeds, you're gonna kill your chickens. If there is, it's a small amount, and the chickens are smart, Mr. Biggs. They're only gonna eat as much as they know they can eat. They're not gonna kill themselves with arsenic. We've been doing this for a few years now. We have not had any chickens die from it. So, that's all I can say about that is we've never had any chickens die from it. Over here, we're growing potatoes. As you can see, they're doing awesome. We're growing potatoes with our spent hay from our winter chicken coop and with leaf clippings, that's it. No other inputs other than the potato seeds. That's crazy. We already paid for the hay. We got some right here that's still left over. It got fertilized by the chickens. We put it out in the rain, let the manure get washed in it a little bit, took off the excess manure, and now it's gonna grow our potatoes. That's pretty free and easy. I like it. We have our meat birds and some of our egg layer chickens in chicken tractors. We're moving them around the pasture, and this is where they start at the beginning of the season. See how dark and green my lawn is? Look at that, look. That's not from bought fertilizer, that's from chicken manure. Free chicken manure. I'm already getting something from the chickens and they're fertilizing my lawn and eating the bugs and ticks. I mean, this is just a no-brainer, you gotta try it. Look. What are you doing? See how thick it is right there too? That's sometimes the only downfall is I gotta mow my lawn more. But the cool part about that is that means I get more grass clippings and I can either feed it back to my animals or I can use it to mulch my garden with. So it's a win-win. Might be a little bit more work for me, but I got that nice Kubota tractor, so I don't mind. And this little garden patch right here, that's where we raised our pigs last year. They're growing our cucumbers, summer squash, zucchini, buttercup squash, spaghetti squash, and pumpkins over here for free. I didn't do anything else over here. All of that, I brought the tractor over and I leveled out the area, because as you know, pigs like to dig. So I had to cover this, I had to spread this out. They had some awesome compost over here from their manure. We had hay, straw, and wood chips that they had used all last summer. It sat during the winter, composted. And now look at this garden. All I did was plant in it. I haven't watered it. I haven't fertilized it, and I'm not going to all season. My house is way over there. I mean, there is a hose over there, but I'm too darn lazy. I'm not dragging a hose over here. We heat our house with wood. We buy in the firewood. So we get to heat our house with the wood, but we can get a few more things out of the wood heat if we really think about it. It's not a waste. We take all that pesky wood ash, we save it, all that wood ash, and now we can put that in our compost pile. We can feed it to our animals. The animals really like it. It's got charcoal in it. 
And back in the day, charcoal was used for healing. If your animal has worms or any intestinal issue, give them charcoal. So charcoal is very porous, and what it does is it goes into your system and it absorbs all the nasty stuff, and then it comes out the other end, and it makes you feel better. Go look it up online. You can buy charcoal capsules, and you can take them yourself, so next time you get a stomach ache or you're sick, you take charcoal, and it really works. So back in the old days, the farmers would give their charcoal to their animals if they weren't doing good, or even if they were, they would give it to them so they'd stay healthier. So you can feed your wood ash to your animals, you can let the chickens use it, they'd probably use it as a dust bath and love and keep the mites off. Put it in your compost pile, you can put it directly into your gardens. So you're not just getting wood heat from your wood, you're getting plenty of other things. So if you heat your house with oil or propane, guess what? You're paying the oil man and giving your money to somebody else. Hold on, you got a bug. <sighs> and you don't get anything else from it. If you use wood heat, you get a workout, and then you get some wood ash. Last, but not least, you can save your urine too, guys. That's gross, guys. I'm not peeing in this bottle. I'm filling it up with water. But that is my urine in that bottle. This is one other thing that's really great for your garden, guys. You might not realize it, but urine, diluted urine on your garden. We just got a comment and I got a good laugh out of it. Rick Rutten. If I'm saying your last name wrong, I'm sorry and correct me on it, Rick. It says, you're killing me, Al. I'm sorry, I don't wanna kill anybody. Please post the recipe and make my life easy. Oh, you want the modern homesteading chicken marsala recipe? I'll have to link that for you guys. It's awesome. So if you're gonna put your urine directly on your garden, dilute it 20 parts water to one part urine. Corn loves it. So if you come over to my house and you have some corn, just remember, it's been peed on. And yes, I keep a gallon jug in my truck to pee in when I'm working. If I'm gonna have to pee somewhere, I might as well keep it and bring it home and get some good corn from it, right? All right, I hope I didn't lose you with the whole peeing in the garden thing. I'm serious, guys. Pee is awesome. Your urine is awesome. Think about it. If a dog goes pee in one spot a lot, what happens? They kill the grass. It's a natural roundup. Think about it. It's a natural roundup. No more reason to use roundup if you use roundup. Don't! Go bring it. I don't know. It's like a toxic chemical. I don't know what you should do with it. But don't put it in your yard. Don't use it on your garden. Anywhere. Bring it to a hazardous material place. Do you know what roundup was made? in the first place, they used to clean steam pipes back in the day with it. Because steam pipes would corrode and they'd get smaller and smaller on the inside and build up with sludge. So they would use Roundup, whatever the chemical name is for Roundup, I don't remember, I can't pronounce it. They would use Roundup in the pipes to clean it. And you know how they learned that it killed grass? Because back in the day, what did we always do? We would take the chemicals and we would dump them out in the ground. And guess what? Oh, it killed the grass. What an awesome weed killer. We're going to sell it now as a weed killer. And guess what? It's in our food! It's crazy. Do you know the number one food that has Roundup in it? Ready? Wait for it. Wait for it. It's gonna, you're going to be disgusted. Cheerios! What's the first food we feed to our kids? Cheerios. And that has the most Roundup in it. It's disgusting. So get rid of the Roundup and pee when you want to get rid of weeds. Undiluted urine will kill your weeds. Yep. Diluted urine, 20 parts water to one part urine, is awesome for your garden. Yep. Undiluted urine is awesome for your compost pile. That's gonna help break down your compost even faster because you're gonna give it nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Do you hear that woodpecker? That guy's pretty loud. Do you know what else urine has in it? Uric acid. You know what uric acid is good for? Fighting fungus. So if you have a fungus issue in your garden, like if you have bottom rot on your tomatoes, if you have mildew, leafy mildew, Try some diluted urine on those plants. It's gonna help, I'm telling you. And it's free, yep, it's free. So another thing that urine is good for, it's good to keep animals away. 
Yeah, think about it, pee on your garden, or if you don't want to pee on your garden, pee on the outskirts of your gardens. It'll keep away those pesky rabbits, the groundhogs, and a big one, deer. Deer don't like the smell of human urine, they stay away. Think about it, when you're out hunting, you're trying to get rid of all the scents that you have of being a human, and a urine is a big one. So pee around your garden or on your garden to deter animals. And it's just a great fertilizer. One human's worth of urine for a year can fertilize up to a tenth of an acre. That's a big garden. Could you imagine a family of three if we all saved our urine? How big of a garden we could have and grow our food with free fertilizer? So I mean there's plenty of things around that we can use to fertilize and grow food with for free. We don't need to buy all these nasty synthetic chemicals or these nasty synthetic chemicals for weed killers. We have plenty of stuff to use from our own bodies for that matter of fact. Urine, that's fertilizer and Roundup right there, all in one. Perfect, and then we get all the other scraps that we have. The point of this video is to change our minds and to change our thinking patterns. Think about it, we think about all this stuff as being waste, it's not. We have so many things at our fingertips that we can use to build awesome soil and awesome food for free. We don't need to be throwing away all the stuff that we think is waste. It's not. We can grow our soil and grow our food with it and feed it to our animals and just make so many things with it. If I lost you guys in the urine, I'm sorry, but I'm telling you, it's a great one. You should try it, experiment with it, do something with it. You don't got to use all your pee, but just try it and see what happens. What's the worst that's going to happen? Your garden's going to smell a little funny until it rains? It'll keep away the rabbits, I'm telling you. Leave it in the comments down below if you've ever used urine in your garden and what you use it for. And if you think it's crazy, try using it if you have a rabbit or a deer issue and let me know if it works. Or if you want to get rid of some weeds, try using undiluted and don't use Roundup and let me know how it works. Leave it in the comments below. And we'll see you guys right back here tomorrow. I hopefully didn't scare you off at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.